What do you, like, what's your target? I don't shoot them. Right. You I said you pull. shot a few arrows. No, no. It was this close. The board was there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, good morning everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. It is Thursday morning and we are going to read from St. Luke today. Chapter 11, huh? Verses 5 to 13. Okay, here we go. Jesus said to his disciples, Suppose one of you has a friend to whom he goes at midnight and says, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived at my house from a journey, and I have nothing to offer him. And he says in reply from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children and I are already in bed. <laughs> I cannot get up to give you anything. I tell you, if he does not get up to give him the loaves, but because of their friendship, he will get up to give him whatever he needs because of his persistence. And I tell you, ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. What father among you would hand his son a snake when he asks for a fish? Or hand him a scorpion when he asks for an egg? If you then, who are wicked, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? What a beautiful assurance, right? That we get from our Lord, straight from our Lord's mouth Himself. Okay? If you who are wicked know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? See? Our Father knows what we need even before we ask it from Him. Okay? What does this teach us? What is the lesson to be learned in the Gospel for today? Persistence. Very good. Persistence in prayer, Joe. That's right. Persistence in prayer. Right? So, uh, like like the, the story he gives in the first part of this gospel. Right? Somebody who knocks on the door of a friend and says, Hey, friend, give me something that I should could share to this other friend of mine who was traveling. And I had nothing at home, nothing in the fridge. <laughs> nothing in the cupboards to uh, offer him, not even bread. So... And this guy's, ah, I'm sleeping already. But you know what? If the other friend becomes persistent and asks, and asks come on, please wake up for me. Come on. Well, well, have to come out. He will have to come out. This is so he keeps knocking on the door. Yeah, see? So even, even just for the sake of, pers of the, the other person's, the friend's persistence, well, he will wake up, right? In order not to get bothered anymore. Right? <laughs> okay, so, so, there is a very nice phrase that comes from uh, St. Paul in his letter to the Thessalonians, which, uh, which uh, reinforces what our Lord says here about persistence. And it's a beautiful phrase, which St. Paul says, clama necessis in Latin, clama necessis. And that means... Huh? Something about necessity? No. <laughs> Close. <laughs> it means clamor, clamor, right? To clamor, to, to, to uh, cry out without ceasing. Oh. Ne chesis, without ceasing, without stopping. 
See? Pray, in other words, pray without stopping, St. Paul tells the Thessalonians. See, he says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ. Hey, what, what he was telling them. St. Paul. So, prayer, prayer, prayer. Yesterday we were talking about... What kind of prayer yesterday? Vocal the prayer. vocal prayers, right? And and in this period, what have we been doing in a church after mass? Uh, the, novena. the novena. Okay, we're praying a novena. What is a novena? Novena, a prayer that goes on for nine days. See, that's why it's called novena from the word noven. Okay? Nine. See, nine days of prayer. Where, where we, uh, Chevelle, I'm the one talking. Don't talk at the same time because we will not understand each other, right? So novena is a nine-day prayer where we can show precisely persistence in prayer, persistence, persistence to keep banging on the doors of Jesus uh, so that he hears our prayers, right? Why do we do that? Is it because Jesus is deaf? Oh, our lady is deaf that the, we have to keep repeating and shouting in their ear? No. no? But why do we pray that way? Why is it not only important, but a nice habit to keep praying that way? To keep praying all the time for the things that we want, the things that we need, or the things that other people need. Why do we pray? And why do we keep banging the doors of, of heaven? And storming heaven with prayer, with persistent prayer for the same things. They yeah, Joe. Because they haven't been answered yet. Because they haven't been answered. Okay. And Chevelle, what were you saying? Because it's good to pray. Because it's good to pray. Because it's good to pray. The first effect that prayer has on the one praying is that it gives him grace. The act of praying in itself, the act of praying in itself gives the person praying plenty of grace. You know why? Because it also helps uh, 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 um, improve his dispositions towards God. Okay? Number one, because it helps him to be humble. Okay? Anytime somebody prays and asks for something from our Lord or gives praise to God or gives thanks to God or gives or asks for pardon from God. Remember the four uh, purposes of prayer? Every time we do that, we are actually exhibiting humility. We're exhibiting humility. Right? It's, just like, it's just like when you talk to your papa or your mommy. See? Every time you talk to your papa or your mommy or anybody in authority, eh, or actually anybody for that matter, you're exhibiting humility. You know why? Because you need to go out of yourself to reach out to the other. Eh? You need to forget about your own preferences. You know, when you talk to people, it means you need to focus on them. It means you need to listen to them. It means you need to attend to them and not to yourself. See? It's an act of service when you talk to people. So you have to be humble to do that. See? Now the same thing is true. Uh, now you, 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 uh, you talk about praying to God, speaking to God. The same is true. You have to be humble to be able to approach God. Okay? Liam, you got a question? What if both people do that? <laughs> what if what? Like you just said that what if you should do that to your friend? What if your friend also does that to you? Then that's very good. That's precisely what communication is all about. See? That's what you have to do. That's what has to happen. Yeah. Okay. So that is why we pray, right? We we it it uh, is it's an exhibition of our humility. What else? What else do we manifest when we pray? Oh, submission. Yeah, submission, humility, okay. What else? What else do we express towards God when we pray? Yes. Jana yeah. says test your faith. Faith. Very good, Jana. Very good, Jana. And you're the mouthpiece of Jana, Joseph. <laughs> huh? 
Very good. Yeah, it's it is actually an expression of faith when you pray. It, tr you're trusting that God is there to listen to you. You're trusting that God is going to answer your prayer one way or the other, right? One way or the other. It can be a yes or a no. Sometimes it can be a maybe. If he wants you to keep praying uh, more and more and more and more. See, because the more you pray, the longer your, your, your praying takes before God answers your prayers. Guess what? the holier you become. See? Because the more graces you get by every act of praying, it is you who benefits first when you pray. You first are the ones who benefit. That is why when people ask for our prayers, let us make sure that we actually, uh, we actually accede to the request, that we actually uh, pray for their requests of prayer because we are the first ones who benefit from it. See? We are the first ones who benefit from it. Okay. And then what else? What are the other reasons that, that we pray? Because uh, we pray because God wants to see how dependent we are on Him. It is it's also a sign of our dependence on God. Okay? It is a sign that we are being very dependent on God. And that is a very good sign. That we trust His providence. Okay? That we trust His providence. And it is also a sign that we really, really desire what we're asking for. That we really, really want what we're asking for. And that goes for anything. Any of the purposes of prayer. Not only for prayers of petition. See? Sometimes we only think about our desires when, when we want to ask for something for ourselves that we need. See? The prayer of petition. But you know what? It also goes the same way if we are doing a prayer of reparation. When we are asking for pardon from our sins. The more we pray about it, the more we pray for it, then we are showing God, we're telling God that we need, we really need to be forgiven from our sins. We really want and desire that forgiveness. Because we want to enjoy our lives, not only on earth, but in heaven forever with God. So even the prayer of reparation, okay, you have to do that without ceasing, continuously, continuously, continuously. Well, because, you know, we're all sinners and, uh, and we, we have offended our Lord uh, sometimes in big ones and sometimes in small ones. Right? But it is a tendency that we have to try to curb and we can do that by praying, praying the prayer of repentance all the time. Okay, and... Maybe lastly, the other reason why we pray without ceasing is because it is also an expression towards God that we want to obey His will. That we are willing, that we are willing to follow and to obey whatever the will of God is pertaining to the things that we ask about. Okay? Pertaining to the things that we ask about. Because you know what? You know what? Uh, God already knows what we ask, right? Before we even pray for it. But he, he still wants us to ask. Okay. Now, but what about those situations where, what about the situations where, um, uh, uh, you know, um, some people would like, like I have some friends who, are, who have cancer. And they're asking for prayers. And we pray for them, right? Some of them are already at the terminal stage and and uh, and we still pray we still pray for a miracle for a miracle sometimes God has granted those miracles okay? um, and and we have and I have in my personal life experienced those miracles so why are we still praying for people who seem to obviously be on the road to death. Let's just put it so plainly as that. Right? And it's so it seems like the course cannot be reversed anymore. That they're, they're headed towards there. Why do we keep praying? Why do we still pray? Number one, because of the benefit of our souls. And number two, for the benefit of that soul we are praying for. And only thirdly, perhaps only in the third or fourth place, is 
it going to be about the health or the reversal of fortunes for that person because because let us not forget and this is something that can help us uh, 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 with our prayer uh, and to pray without ceasing is because although God's will does not change okay, God's will does not change but God wills change do you understand that? Do you understand the play of words there? God's will does not change, but God can will change. Okay? It means God can want to change His will. Okay? And in that way, that's the reason why we pray. We pray. We pray. Look at the example of Jonah. We were also reading the, the uh, story of Jonah in the last two masses already, right? Our Lord said, I'm going to rain down, uh, you know, uh, fire and brimstone on, uh, or something to that effect. I'm going to destroy Nineveh, okay? Because they have been so bad, so bad, the people of Nineveh. So I'm going to rain down uh, torture on them and burn and destroy the city. And Nineveh, I mean, uh, uh, Jonah goes around and says, Hey, you know, folks, if you don't repent, you know, uh, God is going to destroy the city of Nineveh. And then everybody from the king to the last animal fasted and repented for their sins. And what happened? God changed his will for them. Because of the persistence of their prayer, God decided, okay, I hear you. I am listening to you. I hear your prayers. I am not going to do what I threatened to do with you. And I forgive you from your sins. See? Beautiful. Right? Beautiful. So we, we have the experience of Nineveh and many other stories in the Old and the New Testament of God forgiving uh, and, and uh, changing His will because of the prayers of people. Because of the prayers of people. And lately, you know, tomorrow we're going to have the, uh, the uh, Feast of Our Lady of Fatima. Right? 100 years, Our Lady of Fatima. So, uh, and, and there too, there too, our, our Lady asked for plenty of prayers. Prayers for the, sa for the, for the salvation of sinners. Prayers for uh, many intentions. And true enough, well, because of the prayers of the three little children. And the prayers of many others who pray the Rosary of Our Lady. Well, actually, several things have changed in the course of history, right? Because of our prayers. And many souls have been saved because of the prayers of those children and everyone, everyone else who listened to our ladies, please. Okay, so pray without ceasing. Pray without stopping. Always continue to praise God, to atone for our sins, to ask God for things we need. And to thank God for everything that He has given us. So it is not only praying without ceasing for uh, the things that we want and need. It is also not to cease giving praise to God, asking for atonement for our sins, praying for reparation, and thanksgiving. Particularly uh, thanksgiving as well. Okay? Let us not stop. Because even if God may not answer our prayers the way we want, let us not forget that God knows best. God knows best. God always knows what is better for us. Okay? So sometimes we pray for things and we do not know whether it's really good for us or not. You can be very sure God has something better. God has something better up His sleeves that maybe we don't see right away. And maybe we're not aware of right away. Okay? And we will only understand things in hindsight. But that is where we need to trust in God. We need to trust in God. And just not stop praying. Okay, folks. That's it for us today. Okay. Let us Bye. remember to always pray. And <laughs> pray without ceasing. Liam is already raring to go. Okay. <laughs> We are going to uh, go off to Mass from here. Have a good day, everybody. Bye. And, uh, Bye. Remember that tomorrow, at least tomorrow here in the U.S., 
is the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. Uh, let us honor Our Lady uh, tomorrow and all the time see, by praying her rosary. Okay, have a good day, everybody. Bye-bye.